This is Earth. The pale blue dot that we call home. The environment here is so well suited to our life that it is easy to take it for granted. But this wasn't always the case. Today, let's take a journey through past 5 billion years and see the phases through which this planet went before it became the only known planet to harbor complex life. Our story starts 5 billion years ago, when Sun was newly born, and this rotating disk of gas, dust and rocks was all that existed of our solar system. Over the years, the particles in this disk clumped together and arranged themselves into more distinct orbits of bigger rocks and asteroids. It was in one of these orbits that these asteroids started bumping into each other. Some would leave the orbit due to collisions, others would stick to each other until a planetary mass, or a protoplanet began to form. Around four and a half billion years ago, the Earth had grown big enough to be considered a planet. The early Earth landscape was unbearably hot, at around 4,000 degrees Celsius. The constant volcanic eruptions on the surface meant that there were rivers and lakes filled with lava throughout the planet. Over next billion years, asteroids kept hitting the Earth, making it bigger in mass and bringing many precious elements that we use today. Over half of the water on Earth came from such asteroids who brought moisture and ice with them in this period. It was during the same period that Moon was formed, as a result of collision between Earth and a young planet called Thea. These bigger collisions continued until around three and a half billion years ago. After which the planet began to cool down significantly. This allowed the water vapor in the atmosphere to condense into a large but shallow ocean that covered most of the surface of Earth. Early unicellular organisms came into existence almost as soon as Earth cooled down enough to have liquid water, despite the fact that there was no oxygen on the planet at this point and the temperatures were still relatively hot for modern life, measuring between 50 and 80 degrees Celsius. Around two and a half billion years ago, sizable land masses began to appear above the surface. Continents and eventually supercontinents began to form. Kenorland was the first supercontinent, followed by Rodinia and eventually Pangaea, the most recent supercontinent, appeared around 300 million years ago. While Pangaea was forming, another important development was taking place. Scientists call this the Cambrian Explosion. This is when the atmosphere started getting oxygen-rich, and the temperature settled at around 30 degrees Celsius on most parts of Earth's surface. It was at this point, life truly began to flourish. During Cambrian Explosion, plant life appeared on the surface. Shortly thereafter followed by insects. At this point, most of the Earth's landscape was filled with wet marshes and small plants. During this period, oxygen concentration in our atmosphere peaked at the record level of 31%, compared to 20% today. This excess oxygen allowed the insects to grow to gigantic sizes. For well over a hundred million years, these plants and giant insects continued to rule the Earth. Their reign was put to end by what scientists call the Permian-Triassic extinction event. It is believed that multiple large volcanoes erupted at the same time, leaving the atmosphere filled with ash and the earth filled with lava. This triggered an ecological collapse that wiped out most of the life on the planet. From this mass extinction event roughly 250 million years ago, began the Triassic and Jurassic eras one after another. This phase saw the rise of dinosaurs as the new dominant species of Earth. First mammals also appeared during this time, but did not grow in size or numbers as they were constantly being hunted by the dinosaurs. The age of dinosaurs came to an end during another mass extinction event, this time caused by a major asteroid impact. The ash and dust from the impact was trapped in the atmosphere for a long time, which blocked nearly all the sunlight causing temperatures to drop and nearly all plant life to die. As the plants died, so did the herbivores that used to feed on them. As the herbivores died, so did their predators. But not all life was lost. Animals who were smaller in size and therefore did not require too much food managed to scrape by. These included mammals who, up till that point, mostly consisted of smaller species that looked like modern-day rats and squirrels. In absence of predators, they started to thrive and multiply, starting a new era on Earth. The Cenozoic Era, 
also called the Age of Mammals, which continues to this day. 60 million years down the line in this era, or about 300,000 years ago from today, modern humans appeared. Starting out as simple hunter-gatherers, they soon mastered the art of using tools and language. Rest, as they say, is history, 